Hey everybody, it's Sean Powers and it has been a minute. Let's learn some Linux. Now specifically, I mean, let's learn some of the Linux Plus stuff that will help us prepare for the Linux Plus objective. Specifically, we're looking at, well, section 1.4 of the objectives. I'm calling it section 1.4.3, and we're going to talk about signals. Now, they're called kill signals. I'll talk about that in a second. But I want to talk about signals a little bit more than they mention here. And also some of the tools down here that we can uh, manipulate uh, jobs or tasks that are running uh, in multiple ways. So first of all, let's talk about signals and what they are. And I don't mean like standard input, standard output, not like sending data back and forth, but like to get its attention when it's running, like it's doing stuff with standard input, standard output, but you need to get its attention. And when we do that, when we get its attention, we send it signals. And there's kind of this, this channel that we can talk to uh, running applications and send them signals. And there's a bunch of different signals that we can send it, but the most common is a kill signal. Basically we want to tell the program stop running. If you do control Control C that actually is sending the computer or the the program a signal uh, to stop running. So what various signals are there? I'm glad you asked. Now for the Linux Plus objectives, they specifically mentioned three different signals that we can send to a running application. Sig term, which is signal terminate. This is actually the default signal. So if you send a, a kill command to a program, it's going to send the sig term signal or the signal terminate. Now, why did I say kill? It's because kill is not only the most common reason we might want to interact with an application, but it's actually the program that we use to send a signal to a running program. So the kill command sends things other than kill, but it's just the program that we use to send signals. Anyway, well, one of the ways it's the program we use, but there's a couple other ways for he foreshadows uh, down here uh, that we can send a signal to a running application. But anyway, there are multiple signals. There's actually a whole bunch of them. I only listed five of them here, but there's probably, I don't know, 20 or 30 different signals that you can send. Very rarely do we do anything other than the ones on the list here. So I just want to talk about what they are and, and how they work. So sig term again is the default and that stands for signal terminate. And it also has a number associated with them. Each of these signals has a number associated with it. Uh, so like sig term is also signal 15. Okay. So that just says to a running program, Hey, please stop. And the please part is important because if you send sig term, that's like the, the default way to kill it. Again, that's the default level. So if you say kill an application, it sends sig 15 or sig term, and it's basically telling it, hey, please stop, you know, stop running, close yourself and, and stop. A lot of times a program would be like, no, nah, bro, I'm, I'm busy doing something. I'm not going to respond. If I were to stop now, bad things would happen. And that's where you can send sig kill or signal nine. And that basically says stop now. And it, it short circuits the program. And unless something is going wrong with the program, there should be no reason uh, that a program doesn't respond to signal nine. If you send sig kill, it should kill it. You've probably heard people say kill minus nine. Well, that's how you send it. You say kill minus nine and it sends the sig kill signal. And that absolutely kills it. Now, the other one specifically mentioned in the Linux plus objectives is sig hop, which stands for signal hang up. And this is signal one. Again, this isn't the default signal, but it is signal number one. And it basically, well, it says a couple of things. So this is Sean's little rant break. Basically, SIG HUP existed because people used to dial in to a computer. And if that signal was interrupted, if they got hung up on, it would send that signal to any program that the person was running when they got disconnected, when they got hung up on, and that program would respond accordingly. Like, okay, the users who, who is running me is no longer here. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop executing. And so if it got a SIG HUP, it would quit running. It, that, that was why SIG HUP existed. It was just a way that you could tell the program, not just, you know, you should quit, but because this person is no longer here, you should quit. Unfortunately, this has kind of been hijacked. And now many, many programs, if they see a SIG HUP, they will reload their configuration file. Why it means that is beyond me, but a lot of times now, if you see somebody do kill minus hup, you can do sig hup or just hup, H-U-P, uh, it will reload the configuration file. It makes no sense, but that's what 
Sig Hub generally does now. So rather than telling a, a computer or a running program that the person is no longer connected, a Sig Hub generally means reload your configuration file. But there are still some programs that if they receive a Sig Hub, they will terminate. And that's why the program no hup exists. So if you say no hup, like the program N O H U P and then run a program, if that program by default will listen for a sig hup and then quit, if it receives that, if you run no hup, it'll never hear that signal. No hup blocks it from that. So anyway, that's the frustrations around the signal hup, uh, and kind of how we got where we are today. But anyway, Signal Hub now or Sig Hub will generally reload the configuration file, but sometimes it will also get the program to terminate itself because of the old usage of that, that signal. All right, I know that was a lot, I'm sorry, uh, but that just drives me nuts that they kind of hijacked the whole meaning behind Sig Hub. Another couple I wanted to mention, uh, Sig Int, this is signal interrupt, and this is what a program gets sent if you type Control C. So you're running a program on the command line, Control C, it sends sig int, and most programs will quit if they if they get sig int. Again, they can be programmed to not respond to a sig int. So sometimes you do control C and it won't respond. It's because the program has been uh, programmed in a way that it will not respond to signal interrupt. And so control C won't stop it. And then there are a whole bunch of other ones. One that I see used periodically though is signal user one. And this is one that doesn't have a specific use. A program can do whatever it wants with this. If it receives sig user one, which is signal 10, sorry, signal interrupt is signal two. Uh, if it receives signal 10, um, it can do whatever it's programmed to do. So for example, some programs will like update their progress. Like if you send sig user one, I think to DD as it's running, uh, it will print on its screen, like how far along it is. And so uh, signal user one, there's also signal user two. Uh, these can be used by programs uh, to respond in whatever way the, the developer wants them to. But again, these three are the ones specifically mentioned in Linux Plus, and now you know more about them than you probably needed to. Again, to execute these, you do kill, that's the command to send a signal. What signal, unless you can leave this off if you actually want to send sig term, because that's a default, uh, but kill minus nine, and then the PID is the process ID of the application or the program that you want to send the signal to. That's how we tell it what application we're sending the signal to. Um, you could also, instead of specifying the number, you could say kill dash sig kill and the PID. These are the exact, these are the equivalents. Uh, they're the same exact thing. Uh, you can specify it either by number or by name. And you still need to know that process ID. Now we are gonna do this on the command line, I promise, but process ID, there's a number of ways you can get that. Now you can do something like PS-AUX and then grep for the name of the program, and then you will get the process ID, uh, but there's a program called PID of. And if you type PID of, and then the name of the process, it will return the PID. So then you can use that in the kill command. Now you could kind of combine those two and you can say kill all, and then whatever signal level, again, sig term or 15 is default, but you can specify a, a signal to send, kill all and then the process name, and it will send that signal to every instance of the process name uh, that you specify. So this is a way that you can send a signal to multiple things at once without ever actually needing to know the PID itself. It will just send it to the PID of every process uh, that matches exactly what you put here, but it requires an exact match. You have to know the name of the running program. And if you don't get it exactly right, it's not going to find the program. And that's where our last set of tools comes into play. Uh, pgrep and pkill. So pgrep is a basically like a, a process ID grep tool. It will look for the process ID of anything close. It uses regular expressions. So you basically, if you can get something close to the name of the process, it will then, oh, let me get rid of my face. It's in the way here. Uh, it will return the PID ev as long as you're close. Okay. I'm going to demonstrate exactly what I'm talking about, but pgrep is just a better way uh, than using PID of. Uh, because again, it, it just matches better. You don't have to have the exact name in the process. And then there's another, uh, just like kill all will do um, the exact process name, pkill is a version that will 
uh, use the same regular expressions to find any matching process name that is close to, you know, matches the regular expression of what you're searching for, and it will send a signal to all of those processes. I know that was pretty slide heavy for one of my videos and that was a lot to take in. So let's go to the command line and do all of the things we talked about and you'll see why it's important to know things like PID of exists, but you might not use it all the time. Okay, so first of all, let's demonstrate some signals in action. So let's do a command uh, sleep. So we'll do sleep 1000. I'm gonna say ampersand, which will put it in the background. We're gonna actually cover foreground and background processes probably in our next video, uh, but just know that this will run sleep in the background. Okay, so press enter, it's running it in the background. Now this really is handy that it shows us the process ID of sleep. However, uh, we could do something like PID of sleep and it will return that for us because we knew the exact command uh, that it has. So let's, uh, let's do, kill uh dash first of all let's do sig hop seven eight three one press enter now it sent the sig hop signal and look at that it has stopped it it's no longer running uh in fact if we do pid of sleep it's not going to return anything because it, it exited that's what this means and it tells us why it exited because it received a hangup command so this is one of those programs that rather than reloading its configuration file sleep doesn't really have a configuration file uh, it will actually stop if it receives a sig hup now let's do this again we're going to do the exact same thing we're going to put in the background uh, sleep 1000 uh, now we could do uh, pid of sleep again and of course it gives us that one that we just got printed out on the command line, but I wanna show you that you can you can figure it out using that. Uh, now let's do kill minus, um, let's just leave it. So kill and then seven, eight, three, five. Now this should send what? This should send tig, <laughs> sig term or signal terminate. Let's see what happens. Terminated, okay, so it sent sig term and again, it exited. So same thing, sleep 1000, in the background, I'm not going to do PID of again. Uh, if we do kill dash nine of seven, eight, three, seven, boom, it killed it using sig kill. Okay, so all those signals are going to kill the sleep command, but we have to know the PID if we're going to do that. Now, one more time, sleep 1000 in the background. Let's say I don't know what that, that process ID is. Well, if I do kill all, sleep it terminated it because again it found that it had that sleep running uh based on the name sleep it looked up the pid and it killed it and sure enough it used the default sig term because it said it was terminated okay so that's how you can do it if you know the exact name however what if you think you know the exact name and you don't let me clear the screen uh, you'll see over here above my head, uh, I have a browser window here. This is Mozilla Firefox, all right? So Firefox, if I were to say kill Firefox, uh, oh, first of all, yeah, I, that's the PI, or I need a PID. Kill doesn't do that. I'm like, oh, that's right. I don't care about the PID though. I just want to kill it. So I'm going to say kill all Firefox. No process found. Well, what the heck? What if I do PID of Firefox? nothing is returned. Well, that's really bizarre, right? And that's where it can be frustrating. Now we can do some other things like we could do a PS command and then grep for the word Firefox, but that's where the other tools that I mentioned are really, really useful, especially if you're not 100% sure of the process name. Like I thought it would be Firefox, but it's not. So let's do pgrep Firefox. Okay, it says the Firefox, it, it found it, PID of didn't find it, uh, but pgrep did. And so then I could kill it using, you know, I mean, that process ID, um, but I could also do pkill Firefox and it killed it right away. Okay, so pkill can be extremely, extremely dangerous, especially if you run it with root privileges. But let's start Firefox up again and I'll show you what the what the problem was, okay? If we were to do PS uh, dash AUX and then grep for Firefox, uh, we can see, well, I made kind of a mess of everything here, uh, but we can see the reason that it didn't find it 
is the actual executable that's running is Firefox dash E S R. Okay. Oh, that's behind my head here. Okay. It's Firefox dash E S R. And so it couldn't find a, a running program called just Firefox. Now, if, now that we know that it's Firefox dash E S R, we could do something like, let me clear the screen. We could type kill all Firefox dash E S R and then it's going to kill it. But we didn't even have to know the exact name if we use something like pkill or pgrep to find the actual process ID. Hopefully that makes sense. So anyway, that's how signals work in Linux. Uh, you can send them to programs using the kill command. And like I said, generally killing it off is the most common thing that you do. It's usually a good idea to send sig term, the default first, to give the program an opportunity to quit well, you know, like close all of its open files and all that sort of thing. Uh, it, it's like a polite way of saying, hey, I need you to stop. If it doesn't respond, like if it's hung or something, a lot of times kill minus nine or kill dash sig kill will be one of the only ways you can get a program to stop if it's like hung for some reason and not responding to anything else. So anyway, that's how signals work. Remember the nuances with HUP. It's a little bit strange. It's kind of changed. Some programs use that to uh, intercept a signal that tells it to reload its configuration file. Some programs just quit. Uh, sometimes if you disconnect from a remote session, the program will quit. Sometimes not. It can be really complicated, but know especially what sig hub means that the user has uh, been hung up on or disconnected and that different programs can respond in different ways. Anyway, uh, learn everything, do what you love, and most importantly, be kind. And I will see you on the next video.